triangle here, you can see that 13 is the large number. The large number will always be on top, and it's usually designated by a dot. And 8 and 5 are my two small numbers. The reason that these three numbers go together is that 8 plus 5 gives me 13. So I have some counters down here. You can see that if I take my 8 and line it up with my 5, I'd have 5, 10, 13. So one of the equations in my fact family is 8 plus 5 equals 13. Now there's another way that I can look at these two numbers. I could reverse my pattern and put the 13 or the 8 on top in the 5 below, but I still only have 13 dots. I didn't take anything, I didn't put anything in, I didn't change it at all, I just moved around where the piles are. So it doesn't matter which number I'm adding first or which number I'm adding second, it's still going to equal 13. So I can do a turnaround fact. I can also say that 5 plus 8 equals 13. Now when I want to do a subtraction problem, I want to start with as many as possible. I want to start with all 13. You're kind of greedy with subtraction. Start with the biggest number possible, so when you take some away, you know you'll still have some left. So I have 13 here. Now let's say I take these 5 away. I'm still left with my pile of 8. Notice my numbers aren't changing. It's still the 13, 8, and 5. So when I took 13 and I took 5 away, I was still left with 8. I could do the same thing if I keep my 13 originals and then take the 8 away. Notice I'm just left with the pile of 5. So 13 take away 8 equals 5. There's a pattern to fact families. Your big number will always be at the end of your addition problem because you're putting the two small piles together. Your big number will always be at the beginning of your subtraction problems because you want to start with as much as possible. Then your two little numbers, they just flip-flop around. So it's always big minus little equals little, or little plus little equals big. Now you can use these patterns to help you to find when there's a missing number. This is pretty simple. I have a small pile of 7 and a small pile of 4. I know if I take my two small piles and put them together, 7 plus 4, or 4 plus 7, because it doesn't matter which one we add first or which one we add second, I'm going to end up with my big number, because I know the big number is always at the end of adding and at the beginning of subtracting. Well, 7 plus 3 is 10, but I want 7 plus 4, so that's one more, which would mean it's 11. So I've found my big number is 11. I can just plug that in where I know the big number goes at the end of addition and the beginning of subtraction. And that's my big number, so it goes at the top of my fat triangle. Now, if I have all 11 clumped together, I could take 7 out of the pile, and I'd be left with the 4. Or I could take 4 out of the pile, and I'd be left with 7. This one is a little bit trickier. I know the big number, and I know one small quantity. I start by relying on my patterns. I know that the big number goes on the end of adding, and I know it goes at the beginning of subtracting, because big minus little equals little. Now I remember that that little pile of 9, it doesn't matter if I put it first when adding or if I put it second when adding. And I know it doesn't matter if I take it out of the big pile first or if I take it out of the little pile first. But I still haven't found that missing number. Looking at all of these equations, most of them look pretty alien to me. But this guy right here looks solvable. It says start with 16 and take away 9. I can do that. If I start with 16 and take away 10, I'd be left with 6. But I only had to take away 9, so I get one more back, which means it's 7. So I've found my missing number is 7. And I can double check. 9 plus 7 does indeed equal 16. 7 plus 9 still equals 17. 16 take away 9 is 7, or 16 take away 7 is 9. So these fact families can help you to start to figure out when you have a missing number. By looking at all the different equations, you can find the one that was solvable, in our case, the 16 plus 9, and you can solve it for the missing number. I have two examples here. I've given you the 7, the 10, and the 3, and I want you to please make a fact family out of them. Be careful. Think about which is your big number and what are your two small piles. I also want you to make a fact family out of this equation. Notice you have a 12, a 4, and then the missing number. Put all the numbers that you know into your fact family first, and then find the one that's solvable. Go ahead, copy down the numbers, and press pause. You can start again when you're ready to check your work. Okay, welcome back. 
You should have noticed in this first one that the 10 is the big number. I put it in the middle on purpose. I wanted to see if I could trick you. Once you know the big number, you know exactly where to put it. It's going to be at the end of your adding problems or at the beginning of your subtracting problems. Then the 3 and the 7, the two little piles, remember you can flip around each other because it doesn't make any difference. You're not adding anything to the pile or taking anything away. So you need to have one that said 7 plus 3 and one that said 3 plus 7. And it doesn't matter which order they're in, just so long as you have both of those equations. Now when you do subtraction, you want big minus little equals little. So you start with your big and then you just take one of the piles away, maybe 7. When you take the 7 pile away, you're left with the 3 pile. You could have also started by taking all 10 and taking your 3 pile away, in which case you'd be left with 7. Check to make sure you have all four of these equations. With this fact triangle, my big number was given to me, my 12. So I know that the big number goes at the end of adding and at the beginning of subtracting because I want to do big minus little equals little. Now I'm left with one other small pile, the 4. So I know that small pile of 4 plus some other small pile equals 12. And I know that small other pile plus 4 is still going to equal 12. I know 12 minus that mystery pile equals 4. And I know that 12 minus 4 equals the mystery problem, or the mystery number. Now looking at these, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. But I can do this one. It tells me exactly what to do. It says start with 12, take away 4, and you'll find your missing number. So if I start by 12 and count back 4, 11, 10, 9, 8, I found my mystery number is 8. So I can plug in 8 for all of those empty holes, and I know that 4 plus 8 will equal 12. 8 plus 4 will equal 12. 12 minus 8 will equal 4. And 12 minus 4 equals 8. It's those three piles when you have the two little ones or the big one when you put them two together. Go ahead and check your work. If this all made sense, you can move on to your next activity. If not, watch the video again. Good luck.